Okay, welcome back after the break. Uh, I'll just uh, pre present the PDF copy so you all can view it. Okay, are you all able to see? Yes? Yes, but... Uh, okay, thank you, Jeffina. Okay, before we went for our break, uh, we, were, we were looking at Chapter 7. Uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, co being co-workers in the Kingdom of God. We're called to co-work with uh, one another in the Kingdom of God. Uh, we are also called uh, as co-workers, you know, when we work together with others, um, there is always a challenge or a difficulty when we uh, relate with people that there are uh, differences, they can be, uh, you know, we don't agree on different points, and that can kind of bring in strife and um, uh, you know, disagreement and uh, uh, we uh, and we said that you know uh, at such times we need to maintain unity in the uh, spirit. So uh, a couple of ref two references here: one from Ephesians chapter four, verse three, and the other from uh, Philippians chapter two, verse one. Ephesians four three says, "Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace." And uh, uh, Philippians chapter 2 verse 1 says, Therefore, if there's any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy. So uh, the two important characters, uh, you know, of the work of the Spirit or uh, when, you know, we can expect the Spirit to work in our midst um, uh, is when there is unity amongst us and there is fellowship um, uh, uh, of the spirit, you know, when there's unity and there's fellowship, then it also is the right conducive environment uh, for the move of God, for the Holy Spirit uh, to move in our midst, to work uh, in our uh, midst. And uh, if you want to be a kingdom builder and you want to know if you are a truly uh, a kingdom builder, then you need to see if you are a person who is a person who's trying to bring about unity, you know, striving to keep the unity of the spirit, the fellowship also of the spirit uh, in your team or the group or the church that God has called you to uh, minister, to oversee and to um lead okay so wherever there is unity uh you know the the uh, the body of christ is strengthened there is fellowship there is oneness and uh, there we can see the work of the spirit uh moving or uh, the power of the spirit uh, just moving powerfully the anointing of the spirit that is the presence of the power of the spirit just mo moving uh mightily in our uh midst there can be people uh you know, uh, uh, who might not be from our same denominations, uh, they might not worship the same way we do, they might have their own uh, criteria, their own things, but, uh, you know, because they do not worship like we do, we they do not follow, uh, uh, you know, so-called liturgy or uh, a style that we follow, uh, we need to remember, irrespective of all our denominational differences, we are all uh, still part of the kingdom of uh, God. Yes, denominations, denominational di differences divide us, but we are one. We are one body in Christ. Uh, we belong to one God. There is no division in that. Uh, there is uh, no different kingdoms. There's just one kingdom of God. And, uh, you know, whatever they are doing, we also need to know they are also being part of building the kingdom of um, God. So here we see in, uh, read in Luke chapter 9, verses 49 to 50, um, you know, John tells uh, Jesus that, uh, you know, uh, there are some people who are casting out demons in the name of Jesus, and uh, uh, he he asked them not to do so uh, because they are not uh, people who are following uh, Jesus. They are not part of the group, the core group of Jesus and his disciples and the other people who are following Jesus. And Jesus, what is Jesus' response? He says, do not forbid them, for he who is not against us is on our uh, side. Okay, so... 
you know, people can, uh, all of us can be worshipping the true and living God. We can be worshipping Jesus. We can, uh, uh, we are uh, on the same page regarding his, uh, you know, uh, the work of the Father in sending his Son, uh, Jesus coming down as a Messiah, Jesus uh, dying on the cross for our sins, the finished work of the cross, and, uh, you know, believing in the finished work of the cross, accepting him as our Lord and Savior, and worshipping uh, Jesus, when we are on the same page, then, you know, uh, irrespective of the way that we worship, our style, um, you know, our denominational differences, uh, we need to know that uh, all of us are uh, together building God's uh, uh, kingdom okay and we also need to uh, you know partner with them co-work with them in extending uh, god's kingdom and also furthering the work of god's kingdom we need to be kingdom minded uh, as i said you know it's very important for us to be kingdom minded uh, not to be uh, uh, having a mind where we are thinking we are building our own uh, empires our own kingdoms our own uh, denominations uh, uh, thinking that us, the only den denomination will, uh, of people who will get to heaven, no, that's a wrong mindset. Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, as it says in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 10, you shall not plow with an ox and a donkey uh, together. Okay. So, uh, you know, we all need to have the same mindset that we are worshipping one God, uh, we are worshipping the finished work of what uh, God has uh, done on the cross. Uh, we are uh, uh, people here who are uh, to, you know, uh, with that kingdom mandate, we are, uh, you know, preaching and teaching um, and baptizing people in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, when we are doing that, you know, um, uh, we are all kingdom minded, we are focusing on that, we are trying to extend God's kingdom together, then we see this advancement in the kingdom, uh, there is uh, unity that is being strengthened, there is fellowship in the spirit, um, you know, but if we are not being kingdom minded, then we are uh, pursuing our own personal uh, agendas, our own denominational agendas, then it's like, you know, we're plowing together with an ox and a a donkey you know you can't plow a field with an ox and a donkey it doesn't work uh, you will let just not get the you know the uh, the work done you will waste your time and energy so hence it is important for us to know that uh, you know irrespective of all our uh, differences you know uh, we are here to build god's kingdom we are here to fulfill the kingdom uh, mandate of uh, of uh, going into all the world preaching teaching and baptizing people in the name of the father son and the holy uh, spirit okay so whatever is our denominational differences you know that is small that is not something that we hold on to make it as a big uh, difference whether we should wear jewelry or not whether men should sit on one side women should sit on one side you know paul even talks about this in romans chapter uh 14 in romans chapter 14 uh you know basically paul is saying uh you know uh, leave all these elementary things do not hold on to elementary things of you know what kind of food to eat uh, you know what are certain days you need to observe uh, certain days you need to keep so he says you know whatever kind of food you want to eat you eat whatever days you want to observe you observe let it be between you and uh, god but don't make that mandatory for other believers because that is what the jewish people were doing it was kind of bringing a division in the church trying to uh, uh, bringing a chaos uh, uh, with the unity so he says whatever uh, you want to do do it between you and uh, uh, God but he's saying you know uh, but keep the unity of the spirit uh, you know love uh, everyone love uh, the weaker brothers the weaker brothers here in this context in Romans chapter 14 he's talking about the brothers who are new to the faith um, when they come in new to the faith, you know, and they don't see you following certain days, uh, uh, doing things in a certain way, eating certain food, uh, then you can uh, say, well, this is my privilege, this is my, uh, you know, freedom, because in, in Christ we have the freedom to uh, dress how we want, to eat, uh, the kind of food, to observe certain days. Uh, that is a freedom we have in Christ, the new covenant, we are not bound by all of these things that, uh, you know, the Jewish uh, laws and uh, rituals. But he's saying, you know, uh, yes, 
you as a mature Christian, you you know that. But there are new Christians, new believers who are coming. They don't know this. They don't know that their freedom in Christ is still learning. They're still growing. So you know, uh, don't say that. Okay, it's it's their uh, problem. They have to learn. But he, Paul is saying, if uh, I have to give up some of these freedoms, some of these rights uh, before uh, other believers so that I don't become a hindrance to them, uh, then, you know, I'm actually uh, furthering the kingdom of God. I am actually bringing glory to God. Uh, so, you know, there are times when, um, you know, all of these, uh, and he says, don't take all of these things and you know start an argument about all of them because this is all unnecessary and uh, sometimes we can hold on to all of these things you know that men uh, should sit on one side of the church women should sit on one side uh, some denominations follow that some denominations uh, women should not wear jewelry uh, you should just wear uh, white clothing uh, you know, uh, some denominations they say you have to be baptized, water baptized, then only you can take part in the, the Lord's Supper. So all of these things are, uh, you know, uh, uh, based on different uh, denominational beliefs. So you know, don't get into unnecessary arguments and fights because uh, these are uh, kind of uh, really trivial, unnecessary. Uh, and when you get into all of this, it's going to cause uh, you know bigger problems, divisions. Uh, just overlook all that. As far as you know, um, you know, if you look at uh, what is mentioned here, if, as far as we agree on the core essentials of the faith, what are the core essentials of the faith, who Christ is, his finished work on the cross, his death, his resurrection, his soon return, the great commission, what he has left us with. We all believe in one mind, uh, uh, you know, when uh, we can see the advancement of the kingdom of God. Yes, we have our differences, uh, you know, but those are very uh, small. Uh, we might not agree on some things, but doesn't really matter. But, you know, as far as we agree on the core things and we walk alongside each other, build each other up, uh, we can see the advancement and uh, the building of the kingdom of um, uh, God. Okay. So uh, he says that, you know, uh, a true kingdom builder, uh, who is a true kingdom builder? Uh, you know, a true kingdom builder is one who is... Um, you know, have these two uh, characteristics. One is uh, keeping the unity of the spirit, and the other is uh, the fellowship of the uh, spirit. Okay, so um, let us be kingdom minded uh, in strengthening the unity in the fellowship of the spirit um, and working um, together. Okay, the next one is uh, put the growth of God's kingdom ahead of personal ministry. Uh, advancement look at what uh, uh, Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you so we're basically seeking the advancement of uh, uh, God's kingdom. Yes, it's true that you know each one of us, God has given us uh, a, a vision, a call, a specific function. We are responsible uh, to carry this, to run with it, to be good stewards of what God has called us uh, uh, to. But even as we do that, we need to operate out of a mindset of a kingdom mindset, uh, where uh, you know. Um, uh, uh, we are our, our main agenda is pursuing or building the kingdom of God, and it's not just our own individual visions, call, ministry, or the church that God has entrusted to us. But uh, as we build on our personal vision, calling, ministry in the local church, we are also, uh, you know, uh, using that as a platform uh, to build the kingdom of God or the advancement of the kingdom of God. So if you look at this paragraph it says you know we need to put the advancement and the growth of the kingdom of god uh, ahead of our personal advancement uh, and when we do that this is one way we are dying to ourselves, uh, and we know that it's not easy you know uh, uh, we can uh, constantly have our own uh, personal pride personal things that hurt feelings um you know, feelings of not being recognized, being put down, being overlooked. Uh, but, you know, uh, even as uh, we try to die to those things and we're saying, God, 
uh, all this really doesn't matter for me. What matters is advancement of uh, your kingdom. And I'm going to do everything that I'm doing. I'm going to do it for your glory, uh, for the building of your kingdom, so that you, your kingdom can uh, be advanced. And it's not about me and my name and my uh, fame. Okay, we must also learn to connect and work with each other. We are designed for a partnership. We are designed to for fellowship. Uh, we see this in the very beginning when God created um, uh, 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 man. He created man to basically have fellowship, have communion with God. Uh, and also we see that, uh, you know, uh, uh, God knew that it was not good for man to be alone. So he made him a, a helper, you know. Uh, so Eve came along and uh, hence we see that, you know, we are not here uh, to be an island by ourselves where we're doing everything by ourselves, but we are here, we are designed by God. Our basic design, our basic makeup uh, is to you know, to fellowship with people, to work with people, to work alongside with people, and to partner with people. So in the body of Christ, we're designed uh, uh, to partner with um, others. Um, uh, the famous illustration that uh, people use for uh, partnering the body of Christ is about uh, what Paul says, you know, when he uh, uses uh, uh, the human body and he says, you know, in the human body, there are uh, different parts, and different parts have different functions. Uh, uh, but all of those uh, parts are very, very important. Some are very significant, some are uh, uh, very insignificant, uh, small, some are big. Uh, but irrespective of uh, all of that, you know, each part in our body has a function, and each of the part has to fulfill its function for the body to uh, work uh, effectively. The same way, in the body of Christ, each one of us have different functions. Some of our functions can be big, like being a prof, uh, uh, being in the fivefold ministry office, being a pastor, uh, an apostle, uh, a prophet, uh, uh, a teacher, an evangelist. Uh, but that does not make us. Uh, great uh, that does not mean that we are uh, you know uh, in a higher pedestal than the other believers uh, uh, the other believers who might be just uh, having like membership gifts like you know uh, uh, help or administration or just serving or uh, you know uh, motivating people encouraging people or just praying uh, you know we can look down upon them and say that they are insignificant they have small roles but you know uh, Paul is saying whether uh, the role is big or small each one of us have a specific function and each one of us doing our specific functions you know if we do it all together we are basically doing it for the enriching and the building of the body of uh, Christ so partnership is uh, you know, uh, in the body of Christ is complementing each other. We are complementing each other and we're not competing with each other. Okay, most of the time in the body of Christ, we see that uh, there is more of competition than complementing. You know, uh, Eve basically was brought in to complement a man. Uh, <clears throat> That is how we are created. So we are created here to complement each other, to support each other, to fill in uh, where the other person cannot, where we have that specific uh, gifts and calling and the grace of God. Uh, so let's not get into a competition, but uh, let's be there to fulfill our function in the body of Christ and, um, you know, um, uh, and uh, complement each other. So we are all needed uh, with our different giftings, whether small or big, uh, for God to move uh, in our lives uh, and uh, also for the uh, body of Christ to be extended, for it to grow uh, so that, the, you know, when each one of us are fulfilling our functions, uh, you know, we are basically doing it for the edification of the body of Christ, for the enriching and the edification of the body of uh, Christ. So is each one of us are positioned, equipped and released uh, into our specific call and function, uh, you know, uh, uh, we do it for uh, the furtherance of God's kingdom and for the edification of the body of uh, Christ. Uh, look at these two uh, references here in John chapter 4 verses 36 and 38 and 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 5 and uh, five to eight here it's basically talking that you know uh, 
uh, the way God works, God often uses one man to, uh, you know, to uh, till the ground, another to sow, another maybe to water, another uh, maybe to take care of the crop, and another to come in a season where, you know, they just have to reap. But, uh, you know, whoever is come into whichever season, they have to be, uh, uh, they have to acknowledge those who have labored in the previous season. Now, if you are in a season where you have entered into this place where you are just reaping uh, the harvest, you're seeing God's word, it uh, works to move mightily. It does not mean that it's because of your spiritual maturity or your intimacy with God or how uh, holy you are uh, that God is just, uh, you know, uh, his move is there and you're reaping, uh, you're seeing the move of God, people's life being touched, people's lives being saved. Um, uh, you know, it's also because people uh, in the previous seasons have functioned, have labored hard, they have toiled, they have cried out to God, they have prayed, they have worked in that mission field, they have basically come in and tilled the ground, uh, they've sown in the seeds, they have, uh, some of them have watered, some of them have nurtured, and you have come in into the season where you're just reaping. So, um, you know, uh, like it says here, you know, uh, I sent you to reap for that which you have not labored uh, in John chapter 4 verse 38. Others have labored and you have entered into their uh, labor. So even as you've entered into other people's labor, you know, and it comes to a place where you are celebrating, you know, uh, also celebrate along with them. Acknowledge uh, those people who have in the previous seasons labored hard, uh, done what God has called them to do. Of course, they have moved on. Maybe they've gone to different places. Maybe they've moved on to glory. You can recognize them, their inputs, uh, share what they have done, what God has done in and through their lives, uh, which means that we don't take all the glory and honor for ourselves. And it also doesn't mean that it's all because of us that, you know, this is happening here, uh, that people's lives have been touched. There's a great move of God. No, it's because of other people who have also um, labored. Look at what Paul says, you know. Um, now, some people in the church at Corinth, they're saying we belong to Paul. Some say we belong to Apollos. Uh, and some say that we belong to someone else. So, you know, Paul is saying, uh, who is Paul? Who is Apollos? Aren't we just ministers of God whom God has given us the, this responsibility? Uh, so Paul is saying, maybe I planted the church at Corinth, but Apollos watered, but who gives the increase? It's basically God who works in all of the seasons. So it's uh, Paul is saying, it's neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but it's God who gives the uh, increase. Okay, so and Paul uh, beautifully ends this, uh, uh, you know, passage. He say, uh, you know, each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. So those who have labored in the foundation period of laying the foundation of tilling the ground, the hard work, the messy job they have done, you know, God will give them the reward. Those who have just sown with tears, with cries, you know, uh, labored hard, uh, God will reward them. And their reward is what? They are able to see the reaping of the harvest, even if they've moved on to glory, you know, the harvest is uh, a reward of the work that they have uh, uh, done. Okay, so we need to also acknowledge other people who have stepped in, uh, uh, you know, who have worked hard and, uh, you know, um, and have done their uh, part. Okay, uh, even in the kingdom mindset, it's very important to, to know that, you know, we allow other people to step into our field, uh, you know, our vision. Uh, we've already spoken about this. God brings in other people to step in, uh, to, uh, you know, uh, work on the vision, the calling that we have uh, uh, given, uh, that God has given to us. Uh, so it's God who sends people uh, to labor. Uh, you know, but if we don't have a kingdom mindset, if we, we don't think, okay, kingdom, uh, uh, what God has entrusted to me is also having to do with partnering with others, co-working along with others, uh, you know, uh, and we're not able to see that, then we will 
uh, what we will do is we will be basically sending away you know laborers whom god has uh, sent into our uh, 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 our field or uh, into the vision that he's given to us and then sometimes we are wondering you know uh, we are working hard we have sown the seeds uh, but why aren't we able to see the harvest or sometimes you're wondering why there are no seeds uh, or the uh, or maybe wondering why the seeds that we have sown why they are not growing why they're not springing up it's basically because um, you know we ha we don't have a kingdom mindset we are not uh, working with that kingdom mindset uh, where we are willing to uh, take in people that god has sending into our uh, field and we're just chasing them away um, because we're thinking that if they come in, they will take away what is ours. Or uh, uh, we are thinking that, you know, hey, I labored, I worked hard. Uh, they will take away what is mine, all my hard work. So why should I allow somebody else? Uh, well, that is not the kingdom uh, mindset. Okay, so um, uh, uh, John chapter 13, verse 20, uh, Jesus says, whoever receives uh, those whom the Lord has sent has received uh, him has received God himself so he says in uh, John chapter 13 verse 20 most assuredly I say to you he who receives uh, he who receives whomever I send receives me and he who receives me receives who sent me so some of us are guilty in turning away people away from our work uh, you know because uh, you know they uh, they 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 have come into our labor uh, but you know we must permit them we must allow them uh, to build on what god has uh, you know entrusted to us at the same time you know like we i like i said earlier we need to be cautious uh, uh, you know we need to be on guard um, uh, who we allow to enter into our work, the vision God has given to us, uh, because there are some people who can come with their own selfish interests, their selfish agendas, and uh, we need to guard uh, against false prophets and uh, people, uh, you know, uh, who pretend to be ministers of Christ, but who come with uh, uh, their own personal selfish agendas, and that can trot the work of God, that can uh, delay the move of God and the things of God because of uh, uh, the things that are happening uh, within the divisions, the fighting, the jealousy, the uh, insecurity. Okay. Uh, we need to remember that in the kingdom of God, uh, you know, uh, it is God's kingdom. He will do things his way, not our way. So in God's kingdom, uh, increase comes through par uh, partnership uh, because God has uh, designed it uh, that way. Okay. So, um, you know, just remember to... Uh, uh, we that we cannot reap unless uh, you know other people have plowed the ground, sowed the seeds, watered, uh, done it to their own sacrifice, prayers, and labors. And uh, when we are reaping their benefits, we need to rejoice and celebrate uh, along with uh, uh, them. Okay, so uh, an important aspect in kingdom partnership is that we must know where God wants us to be positioned in uh, in any given season of our life what role he wants us to play whether he wants us to be uh, you know sowing uh, uh, or uh, uh, or digging or laying the foundation in somebody else's uh, uh, field or vineyard or whether he wants us to reap what somebody else has sown or whether he wants to uh, us to move out from somebody else's field or vineyard into our own field uh, to begin our own work. Uh, so, you know, what season of life God is calling us, we need to be very mindful. And God shows us uh, the seasons that, uh, uh, you know, uh, that he takes us through. He prepares us for those seasons. And we need to be very mindful of the seasons that uh, God is taking us into. Yes, Paul, you have uh, something to say? Hello, Paul. Uh, do you have something to say? Sorry, Paul, we're not able to hear you. Sorry, sorry, it's just a mistake. Okay. Uh, anyone has any questions so far? Any questions?
no questions. Okay, just looking at uh, Paul's life, you know, uh, Paul also was a co-worker. Uh, he had so many people whom he co-worked with, who worked, he worked alongside with. He traveled along in his missionary journeys, uh, who he trained, uh, he, whom he equipped, uh, and who also he, you know, uh, gave uh, them responsibilities. So all of these references on your screen from uh, Romans chapter 16, verse 7, verse 21, 2 Corinthians 8, 23, Philippians 4, 3, Colossians 1, 7, uh, Colossians 4, verses 7, 10 to 11, 1 Thessalonians 3, 2, Philemon. Uh, you know, basically, Paul, before he um, begins his letter or when he ends his letter, he always uh, acknowledges the people who are along with him, who are serving along with him, who sends the greetings to the various churches that he's writing uh, epistles to. And he addresses all of these co workers as fellow prisoners. That means uh, when he was in prison, in, ho in house arrest, the people who were alongside him, working along with him, ministering to him, bringing him things, and also uh, doing the things that he, you know Paul is entrusting to them. So he calls them fellow prisoners, work fellow, partners, uh, fellow helper, yoke fellow, fellow laborers, fellow servants. Uh, and then he mentions a whole list of names. So we see that uh, 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 not only just men, but also women, uh, who labor along with him, who partner along with him. And uh, this is a good example for us to uh, follow ourselves that, you know, when, uh, you know, people who labor along with us, we recognize them, we honor them, um, and we give them the honor that is due, the due recognition uh, that is due to them uh, because of what they are doing and how they are laboring alongside with uh, us. Okay. Uh, the next point is even as we are, uh, uh, you know, looking at being kingdom minded uh, in the sense of uh, co-working with others, allow God to bring about uh, divine uh, connections. A good example given here is in First Chron Chron uh, Chronicles chapter 12, verses 16 to 18, um, verse 22 and verses 30. Uh, eight. So here, this is uh, a passage from the Old Testament, and uh, we see here that uh, you know uh, David was anointed as a king, and when he, uh, you know, once David stepped into his calling, uh, we see that you know uh, the spirit of God actually uh, uh, moving in various people, uh, causing them to come to David uh, uh, to serve under his um, uh, leadership. Okay, we also see that when when David was, uh, you know, running away from uh, uh, from Saul, uh, he was in the wilderness, in the cave, hiding in the caves. We see that uh, you know uh, God brings him uh, four hundred men later on, becomes six hundred men, and these six hundred men become a strong army, uh, a strong force for uh, David. Um, and later on, when uh, David becomes the uh, the king, you know, many of them uh, hold key positions in his uh, in his uh, kingdom. Uh, so we see that uh, you know uh, the spirit of God moves and brings many people to come to David to serve under his uh, leadership. Uh, at first, uh, David was very apprehensive; he was very scared. But then uh, we see that once he realized that these were people, uh, you know, who were sent by God. Because if you read here, it says for uh, for your God help you so David received them uh, he says you know these people say we've come in peace um, and uh, we see that David receives them and then uh, uh, we read in verse 22 from that time they came to David day by day to help him until it was a great army like the army of uh, uh, God okay uh, so we see that uh, you know many of them uh, came be, become part of uh, uh, David's army his uh, his group of uh, uh, men of family that are close to him and um, they become strong leaders and men of, um, of war okay so we also need to recognize that you know as we go about kingdom building uh, going about fulfilling God's vision and call for our lives uh, you know, God will bring about such divine connections. We must honor these connections, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, these relationships that uh, God sends into our lives, um, honor them, treat them carefully, walk wisely like uh, David. Uh, you know, we read in several places, uh, David walked wisely with God and also we need to, to work to uh, together. And again, you know, avoid wrong connections. Uh, 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 you know, we need to pray and ask God who we need to allow into our field, our vineyard that God has given to us. And, uh, you know, likewise, uh, you know, allow those people and those who are not, uh, whom God wants to be part of uh, our field or the vision that he's given to us, you know, we do not uh, allow them to enter. Okay, so even as God sends people, uh, we are not uh, to judge uh, others, uh, you know, uh, in it's God who, uh, who determines who he will raise up, uh, you know, who he will anoint, uh, the extent of work he wants them to do. So we see that it's God who calls people into his kingdom, uh, leadership roles and responsibilities. Uh, it's God who determines who he is going to raise up. Uh, who he's going to anoint, who he's going to, uh, what he's going to do with that individual for the extension of the work that he wants them to uh, do. So there are people who come in the, like we see in this, uh, uh, in this parable in Matthew chapter 20 verses 1 to 16, we've already looked at this parable, you know, uh, where uh, this owner of this uh, vineyard, he goes out in the morning, hires laborers for one denarius. He goes out in the third hour uh, and then he goes out again in the sixth hour, ninth hour, eleventh hour, and he brings in laborers to work in his vineyard. And then the end of the day, he pays everybody, those he brings in the morning, those he brings in the eleventh hour, he pays them all the same. And... Uh, when the people who came in the morning are uh, questioned, you know, how can we get the same as those who came in the 11th hour on the 9th hour? Uh, you know, the, vineyard, the, the owner of the vineyard says, uh, you know, isn't it lawful for me to do uh, as I wish with my own things? You know, and he says the last will be first and the first will be last. For many are called, if you look at uh, verse um, 16. So the last will be first and the first last for many are called, but few are uh, chosen. We already looked at this parable. Okay, we we learned that you know it's God who calls. Uh, there are many who would come in the later stage who have the benefit of building upon the grace, the revelation, the anointing of the previous generations. Um, you know, and hence uh, they don't have to labor hard like the previous generations because the work has already, the, the foundation has been laid, the seeds have been sown, uh, things have, the, the, the crop has already been watered and they're ready for harvest. Uh, you know, so the, the harvest, the work is quicker and easier. Uh, the harvest is there, but we need to celebrate and rejoice with, uh, with what God has done. Uh, through the lives of uh, the people that we are harvesting and the people who have labored uh, in the uh, past, okay? And uh, if you look at uh, Romans chapter 14, verse 4, uh, it says, you know, we need to, we shouldn't be judging another man's servant. Um, and also First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5, Paul says, you don't judge anything before time uh, because it's God who... Uh, judges. So avoid comparing yourself with other ministers of God. Uh, you know, it's their calling, it's their leading, what God has called them to do. You be faithful and sincere with what God has entrusted you with, what he's asking you to do. And don't judge other ministers um, uh, because, you know, we have a judge who's uh, who's going to judge our deeds, uh, everyone's deeds, and we uh, stand accountable to uh, him. Okay, each one is gifted differently. We all know that uh, we are, uh, have different gifts and uh, all of our uh, gifts, though they are different, are needed, are important for the function of the body of Christ and it profits uh, everybody. It, it, it uh, edifies uh, the church, okay? So don't raise up walls of division because of differences that are there. Um, you know, just overlook those small petty differences, but, uh, uh, you know, focus on the main core, uh, uh, like we said, what was the main core uh, of kingdom building of what God wants us to uh, do. So don't major on the minors, don't debate on things like I talked about Romans chapter 14. Um, 
you know, don't allow the significant issues uh, to divide us, uh, but look at the, uh, the overall thing, uh, the important thing about uh, fulfilling the kingdom mandate and doing about what God, going, up, going about doing what God has called us to uh, do, okay? Uh, we also need to value partnership in the kingdom. Uh, you know, uh, it's uh, we can you know we can it's it's great to talk about unity. It's great to talk about uh, uh, being one. It's great about talking uh, of practicing unity, working together, partnering with uh, uh, with other people. But when it really comes to doing it, you know, we need to step in and uh, you know. Uh, do things and also you know look at practical ways in how um, we can partner with other churches local churches in our city uh, other christian organizations so that we can uh, uh, build god's kingdom now partnership uh, brings strength okay ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 12 says you know uh, one can be overpowered by another but if there are two people, you know, two people can withstand somebody else and uh, a cord of uh, three stands uh, will not be quickly um, broken. So we already saw that a kingdom, when it's divided within itself, cannot stand. But on the other hand, if the kingdom is united, uh, you know, there is strength um, uh, in unity. There's power in unity. And, uh, you know... Um, and uh, you know when we are united, or oh, you know the the evil one cannot advance against uh, the church of God, cannot advance against the kingdom of God. But uh, you know, one way Satan knows that uh, uh, he can thwart God's plan or the move of God's kingdom, or uh, uh, from you know people receiving the king, uh, the uh, the gospel of the the truth that is in Jesus Christ. Uh, one way is to bring about disunity in the churches so when the churches are busy you know fighting with each other uh, the enemy knows that uh, you know uh, they will no longer spread the uh, gospel and he's very happy so you know uh, scripture says uh, whatever we can do you know whatever it takes for us uh, let us do to keep the unity in the uh, spirit the bond the unity of the spirit so whatever it is uh, let's overlook everything else and keep the unity of the uh, spirit. We also know that partnership uh, uh, advances uh, the kingdom of God rather than each one of us doing things by our own self, trying to figure out things. You know, if you partner with like minded people who are in the same field, the same vineyard, working the same uh, uh, same vision that God has called us to, you know, uh, if we partner with them, we can learn things quicker. We can uh, strategies we can receive. Uh, we can, uh, you know, support each other, and it just uh, helps in building the kingdom of God uh, quicker and faster. Now, things that hinder partnership is uh, like I said, you know, me and my mentality. Uh, it's all about my kingdom, my vineyard, what God has entrusted to me. Uh, but we need to lay aside that and look at the bigger picture. The other thing is, uh, what is it, it in for me? So even, uh, you know, we we can act like we are partnering with others. We are trying to, uh, you know, uh, co-work with others, uh, build a unity uh, by partnering with others. But uh, our motive is... Uh, something different. Our motive is, okay, let me partner with them uh, so that I can, uh, to see what I can receive, what how it can benefit me, how it can help me. Uh, well, that's a wrong attitude. But uh, yes, when we partner, we learn from others, but also uh, an uh, important thing is what I can give uh, to the other person, what I can contribute. You know, sometimes we don't want to contribute, but we want to be people who are the other end just receiving the wrong mentality. Uh, we also looked at comparing and uh, competing. We don't compare and compete in the kingdom of God because all of us are like the part of a, our a body. We are just, our, we, mean, we need to think as the kingdom of God as, you know, my body, where every part is doing its work. What if, you know, uh, the different organs in my body is competing with each other and comparing themselves with e each other? There'll be total chaos uh, in my body. So, you know, um, we're not here to compare and compete, but we are here to complement each other and build uh, each other up in the faith uh, and edify the body of uh, Christ. Okay. Um, 
you know, uh, don't promote discord very intentionally or unintentionally, uh, you know, uh, because it weakens the body of Christ. Just try to maintain the peace and the love. Uh, love your neighbor uh, as yourself. Uh, that's something very difficult, but with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can do that. Love people in the faith, in the body of Christ. And uh, don't pretend to partner with others. Um, you know, by just talking about partnership, by co-working, but, uh, you know, really uh, invest in doing something to see there is unity in the local church, in the body of Christ, in your city, uh, and there's unity among the believers uh, in the in the body of Christ, in your city, or uh, in the place where God has um, called you to be a leader. You know, you can also be a leader where you are partnering with other men and women of God uh, to build God's kingdom. Yes, Paul, you have your hand raised up. Yes, Paul. Okay, while Paul unmutes his mic and asks this question, anyone else has any questions? Any questions, anyone? Okay, no questions. Okay, if there are no questions, then um, We'll end class. Thank you for um, joining class, everyone. Have a good day and a good week ahead. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Zelatoli. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you, Elijah. Bless you too.